This is a common picture of Africa, a woman transporting one of the most precious resources on her head, water. Most women will walk an average of six kilometers to find it, eating up that other precious resource, time. Children and especially the girl child and women are forced to, you know, roam around looking for safe water, looking for water, uh, instead of going to school uh, because uh, there is no water in their settings. Decades of war have decimated northern Uganda's infrastructure, especially its safe water sources, such as boreholes, shallow wells and protected springs. Only 40% of Ugandans have access to safe drinking water. Not surprisingly, this has created a health crisis. The broken down state of northern Uganda's existing wells has forced the population to look elsewhere. Sadly, humans and animals often draw from the same source, as this engineer explains. So this other borehole here has been here for decades. No one has bothered to prepare it. I've seen cows drinking in the same well with people. Um, just because some boreholes are broken down. War is one reason, cost is another. Often it's cheaper to drill new wells than to repair existing ones. But the human cost is even greater. Dr. Andrew Ocharo says waterborne illnesses are a major strain on the already weak healthcare system. Many times in our settings, it's due to either worm infestation or you know, pure malnutrition. Children with malnutrition get uh, diseases like what we call kwashako. It's uh, protein energy malnutrition. And part of the symptoms are enlarged abdomens, probably due to enlargement of some of the internal organs, mm. the liver and the spleen. Water is part of the cycle of life. But it's not just the human cycle that depends on it. Dr. Ocharo says there are plenty of parasites and worms too, particularly the guinea worm. Um, once a human being uh, drinks water that is contaminated with the ova of a guinea worm, which are inside another intermediate host uh, called the water flea, they get into the stomach, the flea is digested, and the larvae of the guinea worm burrow into the, into, the, into the connective tissue of the human body. Now, after about a year or so, they, the, the, the adult worm uh, comes, gravitates towards the lower extremes of the body. And once someone puts his uh, foot into a pool of water or a pond or whatever, the worm burrows through the skin and mm. starts spewing out uh, larvae again. This is another common picture of Africa, but it is preventable. And that's why Crossroads Missions is focused on bringing safe water back to this region. It's an amazing sight, and really it's hard for us from the West to fathom that people will drink this kind of water. And yet it's their life, it's their very sustenance. They have no other choice. There are no boreholes in this area, none at all. As a matter of fact, this is the only water point for many kilometers around. And it amazes me that people can survive by drinking this kind of water. And yet there's some sense of injustice about all of this. The injustice is, is that we, in the developed part of the world, are drinking clean water every day. In order to bring Northern Uganda back to life, and help its people resettle, clean water is a necessity. Crossroads Missions Director David Shelley found that out when he consulted with partners on the ground. He says one well goes a long way. And we've already done six. Every well will service anywhere from, depending on where it's located, from 1,500 people to 2,500 people. Some of them walk three kilometers to a well to get clean water. Some of the, and, and it's usually the women and the children which is risky and, and it takes hours to do it. A well brings more than just water. It brings life and opportunity, particularly to girls whose chores prevent them from getting an education. I believe an effort to improve uh, the coverage of safe water in the villages is going to improve the livelihoods of these people. 
The UN has called access to clean water a basic human right and has targeted clean water and sanitation as one of the Millennium Development Goals. Shelley says Crossroads Mission's Clean Water Initiative is targeting some of the most remote and vulnerable communities to bring back life. With the cost of digging a new well at $4,000, it's an investment, but one that has far-reaching consequences. The alternative is unthinkable. One of the women who we saw on the side of the road taking water out of a really dirty area. And we had an interpreter and we, we talked to her and, and she knew that, you know what, this water is dirty and I need to boil it. But she said, I've been, I've been working, taking care of my children. I've been working in the fields. I've walked, I think it was one or two kilometers to get this water. I don't have the strength or the energy to boil this water before I use it. Stay tuned to find out how you can change this picture and bring back life to the people of northern Uganda.